Welcome to another episode of General Surgery Made Easy. Today's lecture will be on chemotherapy in breast carcinoma. As you all know, it is a most commonly and repeatedly asked topic in theory as well as practical examination. Before starting, my entire lecture is based on references from MAMSI Surgical Update 2018 and many standard references from studies which I have mentioned then and there. First of all, why do you need an adjuvant chemo? It is to treat the micrometastasis and to, and to treat the breast cancer cells that have escaped and the regional lymph node metastasis. Studies have shown that using chemotherapy reduces the mortality rate by 35 to 75 percentage. Coming to indications for adjuvant chemo, that is, whom to give and whom not to. It is based on the two major guidelines, the first one being the St. Gallen's consensus and second one being the NCCN network. The NCCN network is most commonly asked by examiners in practical and theory examinations. And let's take a look into it. It divides the breast carcinoma into two major categories that is HER2 positive and HER2 negative tumors. So those with HER2 positive consider adjuvant chemo and trastuzumab when the tumor size is greater than 0.5 cm. In case of HER2 negativity, and ER negative tumors, adjuvant chemo is considered in all tumors of size greater than or equal to 1 cm with or without node positivity. And you have to consider chemo even in those patients with 0.5 to 1 cm when adverse prognostic factors are present that is lymphovascular invasion or high grade features. And, and when ER positive adjuvant chemo is given in all adjuvant chemo is based upon the nodal status that is when nodal status is positive give adjuvant chemo when nodal status is negative do an oncotype dx which we will study in a separate lecture and based on this risk stratify the patient and consider chemo when tumor size is greater than one centimeter and even in those with 0.6 to one centimeter with adverse prognostic factors that is lymphovascular invasion or high grade tumor. You need to know the name of the agents used in systemic therapy that is taxanes, anthracyclines, pertuzumab, transuzumab, tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors. You need to know the mechanism of action of each of these drugs and these are very important. So having learned the indications and the drugs you need to learn the most difficult part that is the regimen combination regimen for CA breast and it consists of the names of the drugs, the dosages, the route of administration of each of these drugs, the timing of administration, the number of cycles and frequency. There are about seven different types of regimens followed worldwide, which are very difficult to remember. Hence, I have created a color coding uh, giving spe specific color to the drug, the dosages, the cycle and the frequency, which you need to look at repeatedly or take a note of it to create a mind map so that you remember easily. Coming to the first regimen, that is the TAC regimen, which is nothing but a docetaxel 75 mg per meter square IV and doxorubicin 50 mg per meter square IV and cyclophosphamide 500 mg per meter square IV. Each of these drugs are given on day one for six cycles and cycle being repeated every 21 days. Coming to the conventional regimen, which is nothing but AC followed by T, that is doxorubicin 60 mg per meter square IV and cyclophosphamide 600 mg per meter square IV given on day 1, 4 cycles being repeated every 21 days followed by paclitaxel 175 mg per meter square IV day 1 for 4 cycles repeated every 21 days. This is based upon Henderson et al. 1998. Coming to the dose dense regimen which is nothing but same as that of the before except for the decrease in the duration of the chemotherapy cycle that is 21 day cycle being reduced to 14 day cycle. This is, this is just a modified conventional regimen. Coming to the metronomic regimen 
which is nothing but we are decreasing the dosage of the drugs and increasing the frequency that is doxorubicin 20 mg per meter square IV day 1 every week then cyclophosphamide 50 mg per meter square per oral every day for 12 weeks followed by paclitaxel 80 mg per meter square IV day 1 every week for 12 weeks this is the metronomic regimen coming to the FEC 100 regimen which is nothing but 5 fluoracil 500 mg per meter square IV epirubicin 100 mg per meter square IV cyclophosphamide 500 mg per meter square IV each of these drugs are given on day 1 for 6 cycles with each cycle repeating every 21 days coming to the FAC regimen which is nothing but 5 fluoracil 600 mg per meter square IV doxorubicin 60 mg per meter square IV and cyclophosphamide 600 mg per meter square IV each of these drugs are given on day 1 for 4 cycles uh, for 21 days you can note the decrease in the number of cycle coming to the last regimen that is the bonadonna regimen or CMF regimen which is 5 fluoracil 600 mg per meter square IV on day 1 and 8 methotrexate 40 mg per meter square IV same being day 1 and 8 and cyclophosphamide 100 mg per meter square per oral on day 1 to 14 for 6 cycles each cycle repeated every 28 days it was it was described by Bonadonna et al in 1976 having learned the different regimens you need to know the side effect of the same for example taxanes are known to produce peripheral neuropathy myelosuppression and myalgia Similarly, anthracyclines will produce to cardiotoxicity and leukogenic potential. Maximum lifetime dose of doxorubicin is 400 mg per meter square, which is most commonly repeated entrance exam question. So, what is our idea about adjuvant chemo till now? As we have seen that chemotherapy improves the disease-free survival and overall survival in patients with breast carcinoma. Polytherapy and multiple cycles have shown better results and there is no major advantage in continuing these cycles of chemotherapy beyond 3 months. In case of cardiac patients, 6 cycles of CMF is preferred. In all other patients, 4 cycles of AC is preferred based on Citron. This lecture would be incomplete without recent advances, so covering some of these. First one being Neratinib which is nothing but a dual blockade by anti-angiogenic and HER2 agents. Second one being Evrolimus and Eximestin. Both of these are PI3K, AKT, mTOR inhibitors. These are recently, these two drugs were recently are approved by FDA in treatment of postmenopausal women with metastatic CA with hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative cancer based on Beselga. Coming to the third one which is CDK4 bar 6 inhibitors which is nothing but pulbociclib and ribociclib and the last one being PARP inhibitors which is nothing but olaparib. In the most recent information this drug is approved by FDA for BRCA mutated HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer in patient who are previously treated by chemotherapy. Thus, we, we are coming to the end of the lecture. Uh, we will be covering radiotherapy in separate lecture. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.